The hordes of hell have risen against you, their souls ripe for the taking. With hands of flame, it is up to you to rid these apocalyptic lands of the vermin that roam it. Do you have what it takes to become a god of destruction? What's up everybody, I'm Kirk, and today we'll be taking a look at the early access build of Eternal Blood to see if this is a nightmare worth having. But before all that, please be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for more videos featuring demonic destruction. Alrighty, let's begin. Eternal Blood is a fast-paced, arcade-style shooter very much in the same vein as Serious Sam and Painkiller. The object of the game is to survive wave after wave of enemies in an apocalyptic wasteland. Expect lots of clicking, running backwards, and blood splatter. Mechanically, Eternal Blood is simple but sound. Your sole weapon, or rather magical spell, is a volley of fireballs you shoot out of your hands, which have a comfortably quick rate of fire and a surprising amount of range. You can also charge the attack up for a slower but stronger hit indicated by the blue bar at the bottom right. On top of that, a special attack that can decimate a good chunk of enemies. In terms of mobility, the player has speed on their side and are able to dash, limited by the green bar on the lower left. Obviously, this is great for dodging attacks and getting more distance, but a key trick in this game is jumping and dashing over enemies, which feels right on. Overall, it's simple, fast, responsive, tight, and most of all, fun. Exactly what a shooter of this type should be. Now, the most important thing to remember while you're in the middle of your blood frenzy is to collect the orange souls dropped by your enemies. Souls serve many purposes. They'll restore your health, charge your special attack, but most importantly, they'll charge that fun-looking circular meter in the upper left. When you collect enough souls to fill that up, you enter a rage mode that increases your attack power and speed, letting you decimate even the toughest enemies in a matter of seconds. If you're able to keep the demons at bay long enough, the big bad boss will spawn who is quite formidable. The Devourer of Worlds is a towering godlike being who has a lot of health and a lot of backup, on top of being able to rain fire down on you and teleport throughout the map. Yeah, he's a pain. Destroying him is a matter of keeping the hordes in check and attacking at the opportune moment. It's a fight I found best not to rush. It gets rather intense, and I'll admit, during these fights, my palms were sweaty. Mom spaghetti. It's probably gonna take you a few tries until you finally beat him, but when you do, it is a satisfying feeling indeed. There's a good variety of enemies in this game, starting with these little naked slender men all the way up to these giant tree-looking elder gods that will wipe the floor with you if you get too close. In between them, you have these big bruiser types with jumping ground pound attacks, giant spiders with homing projectiles, along with bloated suicide demons that you should keep your distance from so you're not blown into a million pieces. Obviously, their core strategy is to rush you, but the variety of attacks they throw at you does a great job of keeping you on your toes, and it was fun killing and keeping my distance while also figuring out how to best circle back and collect my precious souls. Eternal Blood features five dark and sinister levels for you to carry out demonic death. As you'd expect, these maps are all big and open. However, the developer did a good job of making each of them feel distinct, both visually and gameplay-wise. For example, the first level, the Dead Forest, is an all-around balanced map with wide combat areas and some elevation in between to break stuff up, whereas the second level is a ruined city where the player fights in more narrow, cluttered combat zones and can easily be cornered if they're not careful. The final level, the Abyss, is another one to note. It may not seem like much at first, being just a totally flat plane, but the low, low visibility and possibility of accidentally falling off the edge makes this arena a nerve-wracking test of closer quarters combat. Now, as you can see, many of these levels are populated with all sorts of models, buildings, debris, etc. And seeing as you're going to be running backwards 90% of the time, it is easy to get caught up on the level geometry. This isn't really a big deal. It takes about a half a second to hit that A or D key to shift yourself out of the way. But the one map where it was an issue was in the Crossroads of Fate, a sort of World War I-esque battlefield littered with trenches that were real easy to fall in and get stuck, which was not great. Something to watch out for. Graphically, there's some solid work put into this game. On the whole, Eternal Blood conveys a dark, 
thick, creepy atmosphere, which is very effective. And the demons are designed to be suitably grotesque and sinister. The maps definitely lean into a gray and brown color scheme, which I'm typically not a fan of. But the simple contrast of orange light coming from attacks, souls, and obelisks does much to give the game some visual flavor. Plus, a nice touch is that the longer you stay in the levels, the more hellish they get, with the sky turning blood red. A key visual element to highlight is the literal darkness of these maps, with a halo of light surrounding you. I felt like this was a smart choice, as it helps create a rich atmosphere, but also likely cuts the devs some slack on the amount of detail they can put into these maps. This is a small indie title after all. If I had to be picky, there are sections of these levels where detail can be a little scarce, but to be fair, I usually found these spots towards the edge of the map. The game's soundtrack is an industrial percussive soundscape that personally didn't get my heart pumping all that much, but it does fit the tone of the game nicely. And it does get more intense the longer you play, which I thought was pretty cool. Other than the things I've pointed out, I don't have a ton of complaints about Eternal Blood, at least complaints about what's here now. Eternal Blood is fun and stable. There's some slowdown here and there when things get overpopulated, but it's nothing to cry about. That being said, this is an early access title. Early, early access title, in fact, as it's only been on Steam for about a month now. And there is certainly room to add and improve. So past this point are things I feel the game needs or just things I personally wouldn't mind seeing. Obviously, I am not a game designer, so these suggestions should be taken with a grain of salt. First, as of the posting of this video, Eternal Blood does not feature leaderboards, and it needs to. The developer has said leaderboards will be coming when the game's endless mode is added, which is good to hear. But I'm sure there are plenty of players eager to brag about their scores. The sooner this can come, the better. We also need a simple how to play page in the main menu. Eternal Blood is a straightforward game, but some of the particulars of its rules was something I had to read about in the community section of the Steam page. To be fair, there are hints on the load screen which is good, but I think a breakdown of the basics of the game isn't a big ask. Within the options menu, it would be good to have an accompanying graphic to go along the brightness and contrast meters, seeing as you need to quit out to gameplay to see their effect, and it would be good to let us raise the FOV past 85. Also, I wouldn't mind some alternate crosshairs to choose from and the ability to adjust their size. Next are weapons. Currently, Eternal Blood only features one weapon, your Fiery Fists. It's a solid means of offense, but the game really could use more of an arsenal. When I was in the late stages of a level, surrounded by demons, I was really yearning for some type of spread weapon, or maybe even an explosive type, to give me more options or at the very least, give the combat more variety. Up next are power-ups. I was a little surprised this game doesn't feature any temporary collectible power-ups. Well, other than your rage mode. You know, things like speed boosts and vulnerability, double damage, Damage, that sort of thing. Something to give a little more variety to combat. Next, I would really like to see some type of campaign structure put into this game. Right now, the game has its five levels that the player can access right off the bat. Pretty bare bones. I think it would be good if initially the player was given only one level and had to meet some type of goal or prerequisite to unlock the next, giving them something to work towards and a sense of progression. Yes, of course, you can work towards getting a higher score, but for me personally, that only holds my attention for so long. Perhaps the dev could even experiment with some type of leveling system and optional challenges. Plus, I feel like each level should have its own unique ending boss, with their own unique attacks or maybe specific ways to defeat them. I got nothing against the boss right now, but when you've killed one of them, you've killed all of them. Now, the developers did say on their Steam page that they do plan to add more features, game modes, monsters, and maps, so there's a good chance this small dev team is already cooking up some of the things I've mentioned. However, I do hope they put out some type of roadmap soon to at least give players a taste of what's to come. Despite how much I enjoyed Eternal Blood, I am going to recommend it with caution. What's here is good, the foundation is there. But this game has a lot of development ahead of it, and what's here now is a little bare bones. For some of you, it might be best to wait and see with this one. But if you're someone who loves this style of shooter and doesn't mind jumping in early, then by all means, check this one out and give the developer your feedback. Eternal Blood is currently available on Steam Early Access for $12.99. If you're interested, I have a link to the Steam page in the description below.
Please be sure to give me your thoughts on Eternal Blood in the comments, and if you happen to be already playing it, let me know some of the things that you'd like to see included in the future. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and ring the bell to be notified on all future videos. Also, please be sure to check out the Kirk Collects Discord linked in the description below. Still hungry for more arcade-style shooters? Be sure to check out my video on Rive. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.